This Paint Life TV, I'm Chris the Idaho Painter. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing and talking about the Titan Spray Guide. Is this a tool you should buy? I know I've been getting, over the last several years, a lot of people wanting me to review this and asking me, should I buy this device? It's time. I finally got a project where I can actually attempt to use this device. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna let you know whether this is something you should buy or is it worth using. If you want to know, stay tuned for this video. So here we go. We're going to be talking about the Titan Spray Guide. I got one right here. This device, it cost um, $68. I paid $68 for it. So give or take a few dollars who you buy it from um, online or at your paint store. It's going to vary just slightly, but $68 is um, what I paid for it. It's the Titan Spray Guide. Now I've been getting just a lot of people wanting to know, you know, is this thing good? I'm going to open this thing up. We're going to go spray with this thing. And I've already used one, so I've got um, a couple of them. And I'm going to give you some of my thoughts about this thing. And then you're going to go see this thing in action. I'm going to open it up. And so, you know, what is the Titan Spray Guide all about? It says on the package itself, it says it eliminates masking. So um, there's uh, a lot of truth to that. It says um, a spray accessory for easy cutting in with no prep work. All right, so I'm going to put this thing together here. Here it is, and it comes with a disc wheel. This is a plastic disc wheel right here. Now, I actually have seen some knockoffs of this device out there that's got a metal wheel. This one's plastic. I don't know the advantages or disadvantages of metal versus plastic, but this is a device, and what it actually does is this is hooks up to an airless sprayer, and it's going to spray paint through this device, it's going to have this device that has an edge and it's not gonna allow paint to hit the opposite surface like of a 90 degree angle. So it claims that you can cut in without masking or any prep work. All right, so I'm gonna put this thing together here. I'm gonna bend it. You can see it actually has a swivel on it so it'll swivel you know, back and forth. I'm gonna swivel it 90 degrees right here and we got a um, ridge right there that this thing just slides into and you can see this would be the wrong direction. I'm going to slide it in just like this. It has a little nut that just threads in there and it's going to hold my plastic guide right onto my 90 degree swivel that has my spray guide housing on it. Now I'm going to install a um, airless spray tip in here and then we're going to begin spraying and you can see I'm going to have it attached just like this and you can see the spray is going to come out the spray pattern will fan will come out this direction if this is into a 90 degree angle some type of corner this is going to protect the overspray from going on that 90 degree angle so it's a device that goes on to an airless sprayer, sprays paints or stains or whatever product you're gonna be spraying right here with this guide right here. So I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts about um, my use of this thing and whether I thought it was convenient or easy to use. All right, so this device, here's the device right here and you can see this is gonna just attach to uh, my spray extension right here and it can adjust forward and back. You can use different tips with it. Now, tighten on the package, it recommends using um, it says it works best when using a 411, 511, or 513 tip um, for flat interior or exterior surfaces. For rough surfaces like stucco, it says it recommends using a 615 tip. So I definitely would stay within those recommendations because that width pattern, if you get something too wide, it's going to throw, throw way too much overspray you know, on um, this disc right here. And so now this disc is just going to run along your 90 90 degree angle as you're spraying and theoretically you know it eliminates the need for masking or cutting in because the overspray is going to hit this it's not going to go on the other side and so we'll see whether that works now the setup setting this up it's pretty simple easy to set up out of the package it comes with a um, standard Titan um, guard right here uh, this is the standard Titan guard that comes with all their tips right here. So it will hold, you know, any one of their tips, HEA tips, production tips, 
and um, the like. And it'll hold actually other tips so you can use, it doesn't have to be a Titan tip, you can use um, Bedford tips, you can use Tritech tips, you can use Graco Rack 5 tips in this device right here. So very simple, easy to set up. Now, I'm gonna say when I was out in the field using it, when I was, I was spraying a garage and trying to do cut-ins with the garage, trying to get it set up and get the spray pattern exactly right and hitting this the disc, wasn't as easy as setting it up right here and setting it up on your sprayer, just getting it ready to spray. Some of the questions are gonna be, well, what would I use this um, thing for? Now, you can use this device for spraying interior ceilings, um, doing cut-ins on interior ceilings. You can use it for exterior soffits. You can use it for stucco, rough surfaces. There's a lot of different things you can use it for. You can use it for spraying around trim. Now I say you can use it, but is it effective when using it? And effective, what I'm um, kind of referring to, do you not have to mask? Do you not have to cut in? And is it gonna give you a crisp, clean line that is actually acceptable? So some of my observations when using this thing, you know, where, where could you actually use it and where would it actually be effective? Now my observations, you know, I could not get a crisp, clean line with it and it did cause overspray in corners in certain situations, but um, really what's, if you are gonna use this device, if you have two adjoining colors that um, are extremely sim similar in color and overspray or leaking or bleeding underneath this device, isn't gonna matter or where you don't have to have a really crisp, clean, professional looking line, this device might work for you. So like many devices out there that I see, you know, on the internet, on social media and stuff, you know, you'll see these devices and some of these cut-in devices and edging devices, they give you this perfectly straight line. Now, what you've got to really take into consideration is these are stage scenarios where you have a perfectly um, straight edge, like a 90 degree angle, and you don't have any bumps, peaks, or valleys. And so it really is kind of a stage setup where your the device is um, not going to fail. And in the real world painting, how often do you really have a stage scenario like that where you're going to get perfect results? Now, I've done some tests and some reviews on some edging devices, and, um, and we've actually tested them in that basically that stage scenario, and yes, they work. But then we take them into a house where you have multiple different scenarios in one house, and then it doesn't function. And this device is kind of like the same thing. And all the, the times I've seen it actually function and function you know perfectly it was a stage scenario specifically specifically for video and advertising so you definitely have to take that into account we're going to show you some basic scenarios that you're going to run into um, what we see here you know a lot is um, orange peel texture knockdown texture your ceiling um, you're seeing textured walls going into a textured ceiling it's very rare that we ever see uh, smooth walls but even with smooth walls you know do you have a perfect 90 degree corner where you don't have any peaks or valleys because as this thing rides up onto peaks and valleys you're going to have paint bleed underneath this um, spray device and also this spray device it has a very very narrow contact path and overspray when you're using an airless sprayer an airless sprayer is throwing paint out at an extremely high psi and it's going to hit the surface and you're going to have you know a dust and overspray bounce off that surface and actually work its way around this disc and you know if you're using two similar colors you may not see that if you're using black and white you will see that what i did notice with the device as you're approaching corners also you're going to get kicked back and bouncing into the corner and you start to get overspray into that corner so when the device does say um i think i read somewhere where it says that it eliminates the need for cutting in and it eliminates the need for masking. I would say there's some truth to that, but then there's some not truth to that. You can't go all the way into a corner. You can't finish a corner with this device. It's not gonna cut into a corner. So you are gonna have to cut in your corners. You, I, I would recommend masking the corner because what happens is the overspray bounces off the corner and you get overspray everywhere. If you try to get too close to the corner, you're going to have to touch it up. So 
there is some extreme limitations to it. So don't think if you break this device out that you're going to um, eliminate all cutting in with a brush. And so you're still gonna have to load that brush in, um, load it up and clean it up also. But there are some limitations I've got you know, a trim scenario right here. I can't trim around this, so I'm gonna to have to cut in around that. You can do, you know, you could take a spray edge guide and spray just the middle section of that, but you're going to have to cut in around all those profiles. So there are some extreme limitations to the device. All right, so some of my observations when using this device is uh, you definitely, you're going to have to still cut in with a brush. You're still gonna to have to do some masking, but um, some of the things when using the device. So what happens when you're uh, spraying with this device or using an airless tip, whatever, decide, whatever tip you decide to use i think a, a 411 is probably the most ideal to tip uh, to use it with is a, a 411 but the the overspray or the spray pattern is going to come out and what actually stops you know the um, overspray from getting on the opposite edge of your corner is this device so you have to actually hit this device with a certain amount certain amount of paint to actually get a crisp clean edge and so this is going to rapidly build that paint on this edge and if you don't wipe it off you know every um so often or quite often then um you're going to start getting paint dripping off this it's going to start running down into um this part where it spins it's going to get build up there it could dry and not function so you do have to keep a rag with you and continually wipe it off now that wiping process gets extremely messy because you're going to wipe this thing off and then what are you going to do with that rag and then that wet paint you can't just stuff that rag into your pocket. You're going to have to set it down or put it someplace because it's got wet paint on it. Now you're going to grab that rag again, wipe it again, because you've got to wipe this thing probably, you know, every, um, depending on the paint you're using, you know, probably every five to 10 feet or so, you should be wiping it off and keeping it clean so it doesn't get any buildup on it. So you should be wearing gloves because you don't want to get paint all over your hands and um, you shouldn't be putting that rag in your pocket, but you gotta wipe this thing clean, and so it is kind of a tedious thing to do, and it does get extremely messy. The other thing about um, you know the spray guide is, you know this guide goes into the corner, say the uh, a ceiling, so a 90 degree corner, and typically when I'm cutting in ceilings, I think cutting in ceilings is more effective uh, using a brush, because you have the decision-making process of where your cut in should actually go. Should it go high or should it go low? And you can actually follow the contours of the ceiling. Now, with a device like this, you don't have, um, it kind of eliminates that human element and that decision-making process. It's going to just ride right into the middle of the corner. I think for the best cut-ins that look the best, you really should take your cut-ins about a 16 inch, inch upon up onto the ceiling because for your cut-ins to look really good you know if you get it up onto the ceiling you actually have to get up to the wall and look up to see if your cut-in is crooked or not if you bring your um, ceiling cut in like a 16 of an inch down onto the wall you can actually see it um, straight on and from a distance whether it's straight or not this is going to ride directly into the um, middle of the or the where the 90 degree angle turns it's going to ride right in there. You have really, you don't have the ability to go a 16th of an inch below or 16th of an inch um, above. And it's just going to ride up and down on the contours. Your brush, you can take it you know, wherever you want on those contours and stuff. So it really eliminates the professionalism and the ability for you as a painter to decide where you want that cut in to be. All right, so we're gonna go take this thing. We're gonna go paint with it. We're gonna um, mess around with it and um, put it to the test and see, you know, how it performs. And then we're gonna come back and talk about, you know, some of those observations of how it did perform and whether this is a device that you should purchase or not. Before we do so, um, just hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That way you get notified every time I come out with a new video. You gotta subscribe to the channel, but the notification bell allows the, the notification by email every time I come out with a new video. You gotta hit both of them or actually nothing will happen. It's simple, free, and easy to do and an easy way to help support 
our channel. Now let's um, take off and go spray with the Titan Spray Guide. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna set this thing up on a sprayer here. I'm actually testing out a Graco uh, Pro X19 also at the same time. So I'm gonna be setting this up. I'm gonna be hooking it up onto an extension. I do have a Titan 411 tip. We're gonna be using it with a Titan 411 tip. I did use this out in a garage, so I sprayed with it. Um, tried multiple scenarios in a garage. We're gonna, I'm gonna, for purposes, to really give you um, an idea of how effective it is. I'm just, I got some black paint and I'm going to spray it with black paint so you can see where it leaks. You can see working into a corner if there's any overspray. So I'm, I'm well aware that, you know, not necessarily, you know, every scenario is gonna be black or white. I think this device would be more effective, you know, if you're light on light colors. So, but we're gonna get it set up right here. You can use it on any length extension you want. One thing you'll want to take in consideration is with using longer extensions, it will spit the longer the extension. So it's gonna be using a short extension and a ladder to spray with. So the device is hooked up just like this. I've got my guard. I'm going to put my tip, get my tip set up in the guard and you want your guard set up just like this and there is i can tell the tip is really loose so it is missing something so let me see i'm pretty sure the seat and seal is not in here so opening it up it didn't come with a seat or seal and it didn't come with a tip so now i need to stop everything get a seat and a seal to put in here so miraculously, like Flash Gordon, I'm back in a flash with a, another guard with a seat and seal. I'm just going to install a seat and seal in this thing. So I'm not sure, you know, if typically they come with them. Obviously, the one I got here didn't come with a guard or seat and seal. But if you don't have a seat in there and seal, that's... Um, makings for disaster because paint's gonna shoot everywhere. So make sure when you tighten this thing up that um, that tip is in there, you know, snugly. It doesn't fall out so I can feel it snug so I know there's a seat and seal. So it's hand tight, the, guy, the guards are hand tight. You don't wanna tighten them with tools. I'm gonna get it set up. Now, I, I way I want this guard set up is I want, it to be shooting up against there. So I'm going to turn my guard in that direction. Now I can put my tip in just like this. Get it nice and snug. Now it's ready to go. So you can adjust depending on the tip size that you have. If you have a wider fan, you want to move this in this direction so you don't have as much hitting the plastic. The more that's hitting the plastic, the more you're gonna to have to wipe and the more often you're gonna to have to wipe this plastic off. And once again, it's very critical that you keep the, um, this thing wiped off and clean. And so even larger tip sizes, a larger orifice size means you're gonna to have to clean that more often. And you, want it, you don't want it hitting um, not enough of the plastic because you're not gonna get a, um, a completely covered 100% edge that you'll have to eventually touch up. So I want it to be hitting enough up on this plastic that I'm gonna get coverage 100%. And that's something that you have to just begin playing around with when you're spraying. And that's some of the whole setup process instead of just filling up a bucket, getting my paint in a bucket with a brush and starting to cut in, I've gotta make all these little adjustments with this device to get it right. And where I'm doing the testing and adjusting, um, you're probably gonna have to go up and touch up if it doesn't um, come out right. So we've got it set up, ready to go, and um, I'm gonna load up my paint and get it going. We're gonna show you um, some test results and see this thing in action. All right, so one of the things I uh, did say, you definitely wanna have a um, damp rag. You don't want it too wet. This, I got a, my rag here. I wanna have this thing really ringed out really well. And, you, and this is what you're gonna be wiping off your device with. So you gotta keep that disc clean at all times. 
Now I'm gonna take it up, we're gonna spray a ceiling. Now we've got uh, multiple different scenarios. You know, in this home we've got, um, you know, textured ceiling to a textured wall and our 90 degree corners aren't the straightest, um, they're not perfect. So, I mean, this is gonna be more representative of what we're gonna see. It's very um, rare that you'll ever see, you know, a smooth, perfect 90 degree corner. Most of them are gonna have some type of bumps in it. Now I'm gonna, I wanna start off my pressure. I'm gonna start it off, you know, low. You wanna work your pressure up instead of go high and work it down. The more pressure you're coming out of here, the more overspray that's gonna carry from side to side and more likely it's gonna blow underneath any peaks or valleys. But let's go give it um, a test and uh, we'll see the results and then you'll be able to decide or decide, you know, by looking at the results yourself. All right, so I'm gonna stick it up here. I'm gonna show you um, just a quick run and you've gotta start it off. I, I'm gonna test it out here. My disc is rolling fine. Um, I don't wanna just pull the trigger and start. I'm gonna move and start. So you can see right there, it's not hitting my disc right there. So I definitely want to make some adjustments, move it a little bit up. All right, so you can see right there, um, overspray carrying man, from underneath the edge. So here we go, we'll do it again. I've gone around, I don't know, around you know, maybe eight feet, 10 feet, and it's already dripping off my disc. I need to wipe my disc off, clean that. Um, got some drips, but it needed to be adjusted here. So I'm gonna show you here, I'm gonna take it into, I'll go from this side, take it to a corner, and we can get a good look at what a corner looks like. I mean, what you, you gotta kinda like, and this is a little bit of my frustration, is I can't like keep setting the rag down because I can't keep going back and forth and getting a rag, it's just taking me time. Um, but I'm gonna get it into this corner. And... You can start to see, I got, I was several inches away from the corner and you can see the corner is oversprayed with black. We're going to um, run this down the side of the trim and we're gonna see how effective this thing is going down the side of the trim. Cause I know I've seen, you know, in um, some videos, once again, some stage scenarios where, um, you know, people are getting these laser um, lines. So can you get a laser line? Here we go. So I've already got a lot of overspray on my guard, but you can't see it because it's black on black, but that's my cut in right there. You can see all the overspray on the edge of the trim. All right, so there we've, I just you know, got done doing some spraying in a hallway. We've used it in multiple different scenarios, different cases, used it in a garage, attempted to use it in a garage, it, um, tried to use it on an interior. I know this is a uh, black paint, you know, and, but we're trying to give you an idea of how much overspray actually you do actually get when using the device. I know I was extremely frustrated in a short period of time using it. And to me, I would just rather get painting with a brush and, and, you know, not have to spend all the time making adjustments and learning a new tool. I know over the years, you know, I know there's a, a learning curve. You have to learn how to use an airless sprayer. You're not going to learn how to use it in a day, but of all the tools that I've ever learned, this is probably one of the most frustrating I've ever used in trying to get, you know, results. And, you know, the, the device itself, the roller, it's really difficult to keep it, you know, going in a straight line, keeping it going at a steady pace. It has a tendency to wander in and out of your 90 degree corner. It bounces up and down any une uneven surfaces, allowing overspray to go underneath it. So it's just a simply frustrating and having the rag and wiping it continually, you got to keep the rag with you because you got to you know, wipe it from you know, the paint I'm using about every five to six feet, which is very annoying also. And to me, once again, painting with a brush is a lot less frustrating and takes a lot less setup. 
All right, so now we'll just get down to the nitty gritty and is this a device that you should purchase? It's a $68 tool and to be honest with you, I don't have one in my vehicle. It's not something I would purchase. I found it very difficult to um, set up and get it to spray right. It took a little bit of time. I um, found more than anything uh, happened to clean this disc all the time with a wet rag. It became messy and dirty and I didn't know what to do with that wet rag of paint and I got paint on my hands and got paint on my clothes so I, I really didn't like that aspect that was the the biggest negative you know that I found to the device so it's not something that I would purchase or carry in my vehicles and there you have my opinion if you've got any thoughts or comments about this I know a lot of people buy these things and if it's something that you like hey let us let us know down in the comment section below because my opinion isn't the only opinion it's not the only opinion that matters we would like to hear your comments negative or positive down below and what your vote would be to um, of purchasing this device if you've enjoyed this video you know give us a thumbs up we really appreciate it it encourages us to keep making these videos and like we always say we'll see you next time on paint life tv out